we are live a very good afternoon to all a warm welcome to everyone for this valedictory session of the seven day workshop on aquaculture and fisheries development and sustainability we are very thankful to everyone for their immense support and participation without further ado i call our beloved principal dr mg ragnathan sir to address the gathering and welcome our participants good afternoon all of all present here our uh, respected resource person of the day dr santanam associate professor marine planktonology and aquaculture lab department of marine science school of marine sciences bharathasan university tiruchirappalli uh, head of the department and dean research dr j jayanti and organizing secretaries of this program dr venu and dr sharmila all my colleagues who are now attending and uh, my dear uh, participants and all the students who are present here today i am very happy in uh, extending my hearty welcome to the resource person of the day on behalf of gurunana college so a hearty welcome to you sir on behalf of gurunana college and then today is the seventh day and uh, this is almost it's a valedictory function of the closing day uh, wonderfully the seven days have gone and the reports have come the feedback have come and it, it states that and uh, none other than even the aquaculture uh, fields or aquaculture industries or the fisheries department they would have not organized such a wonderful programs regarding development and sustainability or, or the workshop on aquaculture and fisheries the department of zoology is wonderfully doing and uh, my best wishes to the department and to the head of the department uh, dr j jayanti i congratulate her and wish her abundantly that she has done a wonderful uh, work promotion work regarding the awareness program and also workshops on aquaculture and uh, fisheries development and sustainability and today we are on the closing day of seventh day and the topic is also wonderful i remember my days when i was a research scholar working on the planktons we used to go here and there to collect planktons to feed my prawn uh, samples and also for the crabs feed to collect the feed for my crabs and uh, hope dr jayanti also will acknowledge the same we ran to muttukadu uh, estuary for collecting these planktons to feed our prawns and crabs and so i am happy and i recall all my days and in that aspect i am very happy in welcoming you all for this wonderful day and uh, sir on behalf of purana college i once again welcome you sir a hearty welcome to you and to all the participants thanks for the opportunity given thank you thank you sir for your motivation for all the support you show to all our programs we are thankful to you sir for being here with us in spite of your busy schedule thank you sir i now invite the organizing secretary of this seven day workshop dr venu to introduce our resource person of today's valedictory session good afternoon one and all i am happy to introduce today resource person dr p santanam he is associate professor marine planktology and aquaculture lab department of marine science school of marine sciences bharathasan university tiruchirappalli tamil nadu Dr P Santanam is a marine scientist and he has completed MSc MPhil PhD degree in CAS Marine Biology Annamalai University Parangipet He has worked as assistant professor in the College of Marine Science and Technology Ministry of Ed Education North East Africa He is expertise in taxonomy biodiversity biology and biochemistry of marine plankton ecology and eco toxicology of marine plankton nano biotechnology and bio remediation efficacy of marine plankton mass production and application of marine plankton in aquaculture sustainable aquaculture practices like bioplast copiplast aquaponics ras and imca he is having 14 years teaching experience and 20 years research experience he has completed seven projects and continuing two ongoing projects total grants received rupees 5 crore rupees he has 249 publication in his name in that which cover 159 research article five books four manuals one monograph and 80 chapters in books manual proceeding he has received several awards including young scientist award by dsc 
government of india new delhi best researcher award and professor dr m arud chami award by kongunadu arts and science college coimbatore he has guided four post doctoral scientists 15 phd students 14 mphil students 70 post graduate students and he is continuing his guideship to several students he is a member in various committee like scientific advisory committee member rdca empada government of india advisor for fisheries and aquaculture mssrf chennai advisor for fisheries and aquaculture reliance foundation mumbai edit editorial board member in five national and international journals reviewer in over 25 national and international journals chairman board of examination in annamalai university member in nearly 29 academic and scientific committee his uh, research achievements are developed technology for the culture of marine copy parts for for the first time in, in india developed ras for large scale culture of marine copy parts for the first time in india developed uh, immuno mobilized micro algae photo bio reactor for uh, the first time in india established micro algae and copy parts culture facility in baridas university the the book title advanced in marine and brackish water aquaculture published by singer john edited by p santanam we are happy to have you welcome sir thank you uh, thank you dr venu over to our resource person to take over the session so very good afternoon one and all most respected principal of this esteemed guru nanak college and head of the department dr j jayanti ma'am and organizing secretaries of this program dr s venu and dr sharmila and other faculty members of the department of advanced zoology and biotechnology of guru nanak college and dear participants so at the outset i would like to convey my sincere gratitude to the authorities of uh, guru nanak college including the secretary and director the principal vice principal uh, dean academic affairs and the head of the department of zoology dr j jayanti ma'am and the organizing secretaries my good friend dr s venu and dr sharmila ma'am for having invited me uh, given me an opportunity to share my experience in the field of uh, marine copy pod life feed and aquaculture so with uh, uh, i should thank dr venu for his nice introduction about me so let us start today's uh, uh, lecture uh, the entitled high density production and utilization of marine copy pods in sustainable aquaculture i hope my voice is clear and you are getting uh, the powerpoint slide in your screen okay before uh, entering into the the real topic let me briefly explain about this uh, picture which you are seeing in the slide I mean uh, in the screen this is actually rare uh, uh, historical uh, picture which was taken by a famous south african uh, photojournalist mr kevin catter okay so when he was visited sudan in 1993 he took this picture which was considered as one of the rare picture and for for this picture he received best photography award okay but after receiving the best photography award there are lot of criticism about the the photographic journalist mr kevin catter the re the reason why there are lot of criticism okay so you can see in this picture there is a girl child actually she tried to move towards the un camp united nation camp where the moon meal is serving okay but unfortunately uh, before uh, reaching the destiny okay she struggled like anything and there is a vulture she uh, the vulture is waiting to die the girl child after uh, heat her so this is a real situation uh, in uh, all uh, undeveloped countries and uh, few Uh, um, developing countries okay so uh, do you know why the uh, the the girl child is struggling because of malnutrition poverty and hunger so these three issue the malnutrition hunger and poverty is nowadays become a very uh, i mean a tragic tragic condition in uh, all uh, undeveloped countries and some of the developing countries even india uh, there are lot of people are surviving with one time meal in india okay yeah 
so uh, the solution to solve the malnutrition hunger or poverty as a marine biologist as a aquaculturist so the ag agriculture and uh, aquaculture fisheries animal husbandry the, the, these are the potential uh, sector which can uh, eradicate the hunger malnutrition poverty and so on because as you know well the fish food commodity is the cheapest source of protein and other nutritional uh, compounds which is required by the human well being okay so but however uh, unfortunately in recent report says that actually united nation environment program green economy report says that uh, due to climate change due to global warming due to over exploitation of uh, wild resources and due to pollution it is expected that there won't be a single fish in the ocean in 2050 this is a serious alarm given by the united nation environment program and the present situation is continued present situation means over exploitation pollution climate change and global warming is continued it is expected uh, in 2050 there won't be a single fish in the ocean as you know well okay as you know uh, well the ocean is a major source of protein i mean uh, uh, supplying protein in the form of fish shrimp and other seafood commodity so if there is no fish in the ocean where we can get the uh, protein source because the fish is a, a cheapest protein source so far known okay so uh, in this condition uh, is there any alternative uh, uh, to produce the fish or uh, uh, shrimp on uh, and any other fish, fish food commodity definitely the aquaculture will be a potential alternative where the aquatic organisms will be cultivated in the captive condition or controlled condition so that we can able to produce lot of fishes or shrimps which can uh, supply the protein or nutritional sources to the poor people and which, which can uh, generate the lot of employment and which can provide the livelihood to the millions of people uh, living throughout the world okay however again unfortunately the aquaculture is facing problem the problem is nothing but disease there are lot of disease outbreaks have been Uh, the reported in aqua farming uh, both in fish culture shrimp culture and molluscan culture for one example for uh, the disease is white spot syndrome virus in shrimp okay so because of disease outbreak the farmers are uh, i mean they are losing their crop so they are not able to continue their production aqua culture production due to our disease outbreaks okay so to cure the diseases actually the farmers what they are doing they are using uh, chemicals and antibiotics to cure the diseases in aquatic organism in culture system of course uh, that uh, use of chemicals and antibiotics it will give some uh, appreciable result uh, in a uh, yield however the continuous use of chemicals and antibiotics it will create another unwanted issue for example uh, according to various report actually this chemicals or antibiotics what the farmers are using in aqua farming aqua farming it will create the side effect to the cultivable organisms and that all available accumulated chemicals and antibiotics in the fish flesh or muscle it will be transferred to the end user end user mean consumer human being those who are got, uh, getting a lot of health risk there are lot of health disorders or uh, reporting in human being those who are consuming the fish which has uh, more chemicals and antibiotic so because of this reason now the icr indian council of agriculture research and even world health organization they are completely banning the use of antibiotics in aquaculture uh, sector so that the farmers they are moved towards the organic farming so the organic farming is a, a alternative to the traditional farming so that where the in organic farming there is no chemicals or antibiotics have been used only the organic fertilizer or organic food or organic manure will be used to grow the fish or shrimp or crab whatever the food commodity uh, the, which will give uh, some uh, appreciable re result in uh, uh, production production and yield however in organic farming also there is another uh, disadvantage the left out organic uh, feed the left out organic uh, manure or organic feed that will create the unwanted water quality problem that will increase the ammonia level in the water quality or otherwise called nutrient pollution or otherwise called eutrophication once the eutrophication comes it will pave a way for the uh, occurrence of toxic blooms so this uh, eutrophication or nutrient pollution uh, ultimately affect the cultivable organisms in the system so in this context is there any alternative way of uh, aqua farming 
use without spoiling the environment without spoiling the uh, water quality uh, without any disease outbreak is there any alternative way of aqua farming yes i have uh, the uh, the natural there is nothing but the alternative farming is nothing but natural aqua farming using natural feed or live feed or otherwise called even you may be add about the bioflock bioflock now there is a novel farming technology it now it is coming into the practice bioflock coflock so I, i let me explain about the bioflock coflock later now let us uh, continue the using the natural feed that is live feed exists in the pond or lake or any uh, wild system even ocean sea so the natural feed or live feed are the basic nutrition to the entire organisms living in the aquatic ecosystem so instead of using a commercial feed or pellet feed which can uh, create the water quality problem which can invite the uh, unwanted uh, diseases okay so by using natural feed alone we can able to uh, produce our uh, uh, aquatic organism so that we can come out with good heal so this is actually the the main concept of my lecture today's lecture so as you know well we have n number of life feeds okay starting from microalgae rotifer artemia cladoserans copepods ampipods very recently the polychaetes is also included in this uh, life feed organism so fortunately these all life feed organisms they are growing naturally in the system culture system which we, which can be a good uh, uh, feed for the fish or swim okay however unfortunately the uh, the available existing i mean existing traditional life feed such as uh, rotifers uh, artemia cladoseran even ampipods uh, even sometimes uh, polychaetes they are poor in nutrition so the existing life feed even starting from even microalgae microalgae is also a poor in nutrition which is not uh, uh, supplying the essential nutrition to the cultivable organism but we have uh, and uh, uh, a promising life feed available in the nature the promising life feed uh, that is nothing but copy pod i here i i should thank uh, professor altaf sir who has given a lecture on second day of this program this program who has uh, explained about uh, the importance of life feed how for life feed is importance to the aquaculture and what are the benefits or advantages are there in life feed and he has given uh, uh, he explained excellently about the how the life feed is uh, uh, supporting the sustainable aquaculture so i thank uh, professor altaf sir for his uh, excellent uh, uh, baseline information so that uh, uh, with this uh, uh, background information i am here here after i am going to explain, uh, explain about the copy pods how far copy pod is an alternative promising alternative to the existing life feeds like uh, rotifer artemia and so on okay so let us see copy pod what is copy pod so uh, some of you may be aware about the copy pod copy pod is nothing but it is a dominant metazoan living in the ocean okay so copy pod is available everywhere wherever you find water the copy pod is there even in moisture so i mean a uh, moisturized soil also there is a copy pod so this is the typical structure of copy pod which comes under the phylum arthropoda class crustacea okay so under the uh, class the order is copy poda copy poda is an order under the copy poda order there are 10 sub orders there are 10 sub order sub orders among the 10 sub orders colonida uh, cyclopoda and apacticida these are the three sub orders the species coming under these three, three sub orders are free living copy pods which can be used as a life feed whereas the remaining uh, species which comes under the seven uh, remaining seven sub order they are parasitic copy pod so here i am going to talk about the free living copy pods which is a potential life feed which can uh, help for the sustainable aquaculture okay let me explain how far the copy pod is promising life feed or alternative life feed to the uh, rotifer artemia we have rotifer artemia cladoseran and so on but copy pod what's the need of copy pod in current situation what is the need for copy pods okay let me explain so why i am suggesting the copy pod uh, is a best feed or ideal feed for sustainable aquaculture fortunately copy pods are rich in protein the copy pod contains digestive enzymes which can help the uh, fish or swim for their easy digestion and is a uh, copy pods are rich in essential amino acids it is an excellent source of highly unsaturated fatty acids and arachidonic acid 
why i am emphasizing uh, here the upa and arachidonic acid these are the important uh, omega 3 fatty acid or highly unsaturated fatty acids which can be considered as a body building fatty acids so if you consider about the growth of the any animal if you provide more the feed which has more upa content or arachidonic acid along with the essential amino acids your animal will grow as a, as fast faster than any other life feed okay and uh, fortunately the copi pores are rich in anti antioxidant it is rich in azathioprine pigment you please note down copi pores are rich in azathioprine pigment okay and it is rich in vitamin c and e and it is rich in minerals calcium magnesium and other minerals so copi pores are uh, nutritionally superior so that it is popularly known as living capsules living capsules okay so because of this advantages i am proposing the copi pores are superior or uh, promising life feed which can uh, support for sustainable aquaculture not only the, the copi pores not only superior nutrition it has other uh, advantages potential advantages so this is actually actually we have uh, analyzed all nutritional parameters of the copi pores compared with rotifer and artemia and apli you can see here you know the rotifer okay the uh, protein content in rotifer 62.84 whereas in artemia and apli it was 62.89 percentage in copi pore it is 69.24 percentage and similarly in lipid content total lipid in rotifer artemia and apli uh, 13.4 and 15.11 percentage respectively whereas uh, the total lipid in copi pore it was 15.36 okay there is no much difference between the artemia and apli and the copi pore in, in in term of in term in, in term of uh, total lipid but if you analyze the fatty acid profile the fatty acid profile very particularly the epa eicosa pentaenoic acid docosa hexaenoic acid and arachidonic acid these three important fatty acids are considered as a body building fatty acids so fortunately our copi pore contain 10 fold higher dha epa and arachidonic acid than artemia anopli and rotifer so it is clearly indicate that copi pores are superior superior in uh, highly unsaturated fatty acid and when we analyze the amino acid content of our copi pore and other traditional life feed such, such as rotifer and artemia so the copi pore contain more than 50 percentage of the essential amino acids whereas artemia and rotifer it is less than that 40 and 48 percentage respectively okay this table clearly shows that actually in actually in actually the farmers what they are doing no before feeding their larvae with rotifer and artemia or even with microalgae they are uh, undergoing for enriching bio enriching of life feeds with commercially available commercial emulsifiers commercially available uh, protein or fatty acid and so on so this bio enrichment is an additional uh, uh, investment okay which will increase the cost of production and uh, furthermore even if you enrich the artemia and apli with commercially available nutrients whatever you, you enrich Uh, to artemia that enriched nutrients will be available only for 3 hours after 3 hours that enriched nutrients will be denatured that is the body system physiological system uh, exists in the artemia but if you take copi pore if you use copi pore to feed your to produce your fish or shrimp larvae i ask one of my student to analyze the fatty acid profile of enriched artemia naply unenriched artemia naply and unenriched copi pore you can see here our unenriched copi pore is having more fatty acid than even enriched artemia naply so this clearly indicate that if you use the copi pore to produce your larvae fish or shrimp larvae there is no need of any additional bio enrichment procedure which can increase the cost of production okay and uh, here you can see we have analyzed the uh, pigment content in copi pore and artemia and napli very particularly the azathioprine is azathioprine is very high in copi pore you can see here 32.13 whereas in artemia and napli it was 2.8 so why i am uh, i mean uh, uh, emphasizing azathioprine azathioprine if you use the feed which supply the more azathioprine to your fish or shrimp your fish and shrimp they can grow with high immunity high immunity your immune system of the your fish cultivable organism will be enhanced like anything because the azathioprine is one of the very good antioxidant precursors 
okay so if you use your uh, i mean uh, if you feed your uh, animal with uh, feed which has more azdoxanthin along with omega 3 fatty acids the immune system of your shrimp and fish is increased as you know well the shrimp is comes under the uh, crustacean their immunity is always very less so that there are a lot of disease outbreaks have been reported i mean uh, uh, frequently by the farmers but if you feed your fish or simple or way with feed which supply more azdoxanthin and then omega 3 fatty acid your uh, the immunity immune system of your animal will enhance so that we can avoid the most of the uh, diseases in your cultivable organism and this is another example azdoxanthin content in different species of copepods and artemia anopheli so this is macrocycla gracilis aitona rigida pseudodiatoma sanandali all copepods contain more azdoxanthin than the artemia anopheli okay and uh, as you know the co I mean crustaceans are vector copepod is a known uh, virus carrier so that i asked one of my student dr s anand to analyze the antimicrobial activity of copepod and copepod fed larvae and he did as experiment and surprisingly we have got very good result both copepod and copepod fed larvae simp larvae is showing very good antimicrobial activity when compared to rotifer and rotifer fed animal and uh, artemia and artemia fed animal so it clearly shows that because of azdoxanthin pigment available in the copepod and the omega 3 fatty acid available in the copepod it will it has very good antimicrobial activity so that you can use the copepods in your system both hatchery and pond system so which is, so that uh, we can avoid the most of the specific pathogen pre diseases okay and another advantage behind the copepod actually copepods their swimming pattern is different a movement pattern you see you can see the copepods swim in the water column and are thus constantly available to the larvae whereas if you use pellet feed there is just three types of pellet feed sinking feed slow sinking feed or floating feed whereas the rotifer actually if you the moment if you give rotifer in your tank culture tank they used to be there in the atta and sides of the bar, tank or bottom I mean, uh, pond or bottom of the pond or bottom of the tank whereas artemia and apple they can whether they can move vertically or horizontally whereas my copepod you can see here in the copepod they can available in every places in, in, a, in all the direction so that it is constantly available to feed the fish larvae yeah this is actually potential advantage when compared to even any other advantage in copepod so if you talk about the marine fish larval rearing almost most of the marine fishes their mouth size is smaller than uh, the live feed what we are practicing in hatcheries for example rotifer you take rotifer or artemia anopheli rotifer there are uh, three types l type s type ss type whereas artemia only anopheli and adult whereas if, if you take the copepod our copepod contain 12 different stages 12 different stages which include six nauplier stage six copepodite stage which include adult male and female so each and every stage it has their own size so that uh, here the mouth size related uh, problem is not coming into the contact if you use copepod you can see the first the first nauplier uh, the first nauplier of one species nitocara affinis it is 40 micron whereas the mouth size of the fish larvae is actually uh, smaller than the rotifer and artemia so that the fish larvae they may not able to prey on the rotifer and artemia so the survival is very poor whereas if you use copepod since copepod provide wide size ranges uh, the size related problem in uh, larval rearing is solved this is an, a potential advantage in copepods okay and another important advantage copepods are having different movement pattern for example zigzag move, uh, pattern short gliding pattern and jerking pattern see by evolutionarily the marine fish or shrimp larvae they 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 are they are evolutionarily they adapted to feed they prefer to feed uh, they just uh, which is very active for example they are they used to chase their prey and engulf since the copepods are contain different movement pattern this behavior the movement the pattern itself stimulate the lar larval feeding responses by the uh, copepods okay yeah this is a, a very important news i would like to uh, emphasize to the participants okay actually the copepods are emitting pheromones pheromone is nothing but a type of hormone is a smell okay so even for uh, in pellet feed formulation uh, for uh, smell for smell they are using fish oil 
even in you know, a copepod they naturally they are emitting the pheromones the copepods emit the pheromones this pheromone if you give the copepod in your fish tank or swim tank immediately your fish or swim they can easily identify and they can easily locate through the smell released by the copepod and feeding over the copepod so this is an another advantage potential advantage which is recently reported and last but not least very recently there are some copepods are emitting light emitting light is a bioluminescent some copepods are bioluminescent this bioluminescent character nowadays become popular in hatchery for example just hatched larvae their vision is very poor as you know well the are larvae fish larvae or simple larvae their vision is very poor because of um, undevelopment of the larvae i mean i mean eyes but since copepods are emitting light during night time if you give copepod in your culture tank because of emission of light the fish larvae they can easily uh, locate the feed and uh, uh, this character make the copepods easy meal to larvae okay so these are the advantages behind the copepod which is not exist in any other life feed it is nutritionally superior and uh, uh, size wise and the pet movement pattern wise it has different uh, characteristics which can help the uh, sustainable aquaculture okay so that uh, with this uh, uh, potential advantage in in copepod we started uh, uh, collecting the copepods throughout the uh, tamil nadu and pondicherry coastal area so normally the ideal time to collect the copepods early morning or late evening by using the 158 micron mesh we can collect the copepod which include fish larvae simple larvae other zooplankton okay if you use the 158 micron mesh plankton net there will be a fish larvae simple larvae barnacles snapli copepod and all, all zooplankton will be there okay once sampling is over the collected samples will be taken to the laboratory using the battery aerator we have to provide the vigorous aeration to supply the oxygen to the copepod so on the laboratory after reaching the laboratory actually we have fabricated the super imposed seal the super imposed seal is nothing but is a grader so if you collect the zooplankton sample using 158 micron mesh net uh, i as i said there is a fish larvae shrimp larvae and other zooplankton and other copepod species okay so just you can pouring by pouring the collector mixed zooplankton sample over the super imposed seal based on the size of the organisms that the animals will be segregated based on size so for example if take in 500 micron micron mesh the fish larvae simple larvae will be retained and copepods will be pass through the 500 micron so like that they using the different mesh seal we can uh, uh, initially segregate or grade the species okay after grading is over so we used to uh, take the diluted sample i mean a segregated sample in a petri plate and see it under the microscope so in the microscope we can identify the species uh, copepod species using the available manual or key okay once identification is over yeah this is actually uh, one of the common species nanocolanus minor in our indian coast and this is paracolanus parvus is a common copepod colonic copepod and this is pseudodiatomus sanandali again a uh, colonic copepod so here i would like to uh, tell you that in copepod there are two types of reproduction okay internal i mean uh, uh, internal fertilization external fertilization so the species comes under the colonic group all or external fertilizer i mean they release the egg in the water and the fertilization will be external whereas the species comes under the cyclopoid and the uh, epitoid or internal fertilization they release directly nucleus so only one family that pseudodiatomid family comes in colonic group they have uh, internal fertilization it has it carrying the egg sac and the abdomen and it releasing the nucleus directly so uh, this is rhododendron sanandali and this is nitocara affinis this is comes under the epitoid copepod you can see here this is male copepod this is female copepod if it is female they can carry the egg sac on the abdomen in uh, epitoid group and uh, cyclopoid group okay yeah you can see here a different nucleus stages nucleus 1 2 3 4 5 6 this is microscopic image and copepod at 1 2 3 4 5 6 and this is adult male adult female 
Similarly, this is TB species, it's a common in Indian coast, and this is the Napoli stages, develop, post embryonic development stages of the FISB. You can see each and every Napoli, it has their own size. So, this size is actually one of the advantage in a, uh, a shrimp culture or fish culture. This is actually copyright one, and this is adult male, adult female. And this is Citropin archetyprans, which comes under the Adpaitic group. This is uh, uh, actually uh, Diaitona rigida. Previously, it is named as Aitona rigida, which comes under the cyclopoid group. And this is Acacia centrura clanoid, and this is Acacia classy, and this is Acacia spinicada, and this is Acroclinus gibber, and this is Calanopia species, and this is Centropage species, this is Lepidosaura ficinata, and Lepidosaura acuta, this is Macrocetilla gracilis. You can see here there is a pigments. This is actually intestine in the copepod. Uh, the pigments, rich pigments are there in the uh, copepod. When we analyze the pigments, this is nothing but azdosanthin. Okay. And you can, this is ICS, Aitona dissimilis, Timora species, Thermocyclops species, Tigropus species. So, actually, there are, uh, so far, in, uh, in the marine ecosystem, totally uh, uh, 14,000 species so far reported, uh, copepod is concerned. Okay. So, at present in our laboratory, we are maintaining 12 species, stock culture we are maintaining. So, okay, once uh, identification is over, you just take the uh, diluted sample in the petri plate, simple petri plate, by using the stempled pipette and a fine brush and a needle. You can just sit under the microscope. The suitable microscope for, uh, microscope for the isolation of copepod is studio zoo microscope. You can uh, sit under the studio zoo microscope you look into the copypot samples and you can target one individual okay and you can just keep away the other individual of copypots you can by using a simple pipette or by using the micro pipette or by using the fine brush and needle you just you just uh, simply just pick up picked up the uh, individual copypot species and that uh, isolated copypot species will be transferred initially to the test tube from the test tube, you can try a subculture into the 250 ml or 500 ml conical plask or beakers, as you wish. And from that, you can uh, uh, just propagate, uh, further propagate into larger volume of container. So, the isolation is very simple, but it is very difficult. Okay, so that uh, uh, till today, the copepot culture is not become popular in commercial scale. Okay, yeah, the suitable feed or uh, the water quality condition to be maintained uh, to uh, on in copepot culture is for this is marine species so okay for example the uh, temperature range between 25 to 28 degrees centigrade salinity between 15 to 25 ph between 7.5 to 8.2 and its dissolution should be between 5 to 6 milligram per liter this is the suitable water quality condition should be maintained to grow your copepot similarly the feed Microalgae is the best feed to grow the copy pot, to culture the copy pot. Actually, we also tried with other alternative feeds such as uh, organic menus like uh, what is called uh, 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 rice bran, wheat bran, even a vegetable waste. But the microalgae is best feed to produce the copy pot in high density. Okay. So, the best of alcohol concentration to feed your, to grow your copy pot is 30,000 cells per ml. Okay. So, by, by, by providing suitable microalgae, by providing suitable microalgal concentration, by maintaining proper water quality, main, uh, water quality parameters, the copepone can grow well without any problem. So, uh, by optimizing various uh, water quality parameters and feed and diet concentration, we have, we have maintaining, at present we are maintaining and uh, develop the technology for nearly 12 species of copepores. This is our uh, stock culture facility established under the DPT uh, sponsored project. Yeah, uh, the only disadvantage, so far we have discussed about the advantages behind the copepore as a life feed, whereas only disadvantage in copepore production or culture is getting high density, high biomass because uh, we are producing millions of larvae. To feed the millions of larvae, at least we have to provide billions of copepores. But unfortunately, the copepore culture is not that much produced in high density. That is the only disadvantage in copepores. The rest of the things are actually, it is very superior. It is very superior life.
okay so to solve this problem to solve this uh, high density issue actually uh, very recently actually i have applied another project to dbt so dbt is immediately sanctioned uh, the project with uh, uh, funding support of 54 lakhs to develop or to produce the copy pores in high density and also continuous manner because the farmers they need high density copy pore and uh, continuously they want to feed their fish or simplarvae so in that is the condition we have to we can able to produce the copy pore in high density in continuous manner for that we have developed the technology for high density production and continuous production of copy pores by applying a simple technology called selective breeding how we are uh, applying the selective breeding in fish and shrimp similarly we have uh, applied the selective breeding technology it just uh, i let me explain briefly about the selective breeding okay actually as like fish and stream there is inbreeding is also going on in copy pore inbreeding means their own sister group they can breed in themselves so that the production level will be decreased so instead of going for inbreeding we can go for selective breeding selective breeding means you can select the potential male and female parents potential parents you can select the potential uh, female and potential male how to select the potential female you just you can grow the copy pores and you can analyze their uh, egg production capacity by triggering some uh, parameters say parameters okay so like that i can select from the mixed culture i mean base population i can identify the individual female copy pore which produce more eggs that uh, copy pore can be picked up and similarly i can select the potential male species from the another set of experiment so i let them allow to mate and uh, uh this procedure the selective breeding can increase the uh, population density of the copy pore in culture system so by applying this simple technique okay we have come out with very good uh, density now now we are producing copy pores in high density by applying the selective breeding and even in selective breeding there is different types of breeding here i have explained how to select the uh, f1 generation g1 g0 generation 1 generation 2 generation 3 so by selecting the potential male and female we can uh, uh, allow that individual uh, copy pores to go for mating by maintaining good water quality and providing good feed and uh, the, that particular female can able to release more eggs when compared to species which grow in uh, non selective uh, breeding technology method so that we have come out with very good uh, uh, result in dense in terms of density okay this is actually how to select the potential breeder okay uh, but uh, due to time constraint i am not able to continue this this is the simple uh, concept behind the uh, selection process and selective breeding okay and uh, there is two types of selective breeding one is normal selective breeding another one is cold selective breeding okay what is cold selective breeding actually i ca i can take one individual species copy pore which can be maintained as a control in normal temperature that is 28 degree centigrade temperature the another set of copy pore will be stocked and maintained at 18 degree centigrade temperature okay the species or copy pore which is growing in 18 degree centigrade can able to produce more eggs so here the temperature is playing a major role so that 18 degree centigrade temperature can suitable to enhance the egg production of the particular species so by applying cold selective breeding and normal selective breeding now we have optimized the condition to produce the copy pores in high density in recirculation aquaculture system and uh, this is regarding the cold selective breeding okay and uh, how to produce the copy pores continuously this is induced breeding as like a sea bass fish or other fish using the uh, hormone induced hormone even we can uh, induce the copy pores for uh, breeding okay for, by using the hormones called bisphenol a bisphenol a and 17 b estradiol these are the hormone which can be uh, inoculated directly into the tank where the copy pores are uh, maintained and where algae will be maintained okay as a copy pores are filter feeding organism they can take the hormone directly or otherwise through feed we have, we have to uh, just enrich that hormone in microalgae that micro enriched microalgae with the hormone will be feed to the copy pore so by inducing uh, the copy pores for mating we can uh, continuously produce the copy pores without any uh, break
and uh, another way of uh, 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 I mean triggering the copy pores for continuous breeding or continuous production by altering by triggering the environmental conditions like temperature okay salinity if you give heat shock or if you give cold shock the copy pores can uh, can uh, I mean uh, induce to breed the copy pores can uh, induce to uh, release the more eggs similarly ph shock light shock light regime shock and oxygen shock and other way hormone induction i have explained and another important uh, uh, induced breeding in copy pod using probiotic bacteria okay as you know when the probiotic bacteria is a beneficial bacteria which can supply the essential nutrients to the any organism so the same way we are actually we are just culturing the probiotic bacteria especially the what is called bacillus species and lactobacillus so this bacteria will be i mean probiotic bacteria will be cultured separately that bacteria will be enriched to the copy pore so once the bacteria enriches that enriched copy pores can uh, uh, induce or breeding immediately they can release the eggs within 30, uh, 34 to uh, 46 hours and you get that the egg production level is also increased uh, when compared to normal breeding so by applying probiotic and by applying hormone and by triggering the water quality conditions Uh, such as uh, temperature salinity ph and uh, oxygen okay we can induce the copy pores for the continuous breeding so that we can able to produce the copy pore continuously and we can supply the copy pores to the farmers to feed their to produce their larvae okay yeah this is the actually uh, the recirculation aquaculture system facility for copy pores this is the first ras facility for copy pore especially for marine copy pores available in our country okay so okay once the high density production develop and induced production for continuous production of copy pores develop we we took actually that all mother culture and inoculated directly into the the ras system that ras is nothing but where different types of filters are used carbon filter sand filter bio filter you will this is the interior uh, view of our ras develop so this is actually bio filter these are the culture tank you can see here the sand filter carbon filter back filter uv filters are there so the water will be sea water will be pumped through the sand filter back filter uh, and uh, uv filter from the uv filter the water will be goes to the culture tank these are the uh, different component and uh, this is this is actually back filter this one is back filter this is uv filter okay and this is a total setup and this is a sieve uh, which can be used to harvest the copy pod okay yeah these are the uh, aeration aerators is aerator is very important aeration is very important to me yeah this is a simple actually the the schematic diagram of ras what we are uh, maintaining in our uh, university so this is st is a sea water storage tank from the sea water storage tank water sea water will be pumped through the sand filter okay back filter mesh filter uv filter from the uv filter water will comes to the uh, rt reservoir tank from the reservoir tank water will be supplied to the all cc cc means copy pot culture okay so from the copy pot culture uh, the waste water a meager amount of waste water will be collected here rct in rct recirculation tank from the recirculation tank water will be again passed through the sand filter and uh, uh, in back filter from the back filter it comes to bio filter where the probiotic bacteria will be maintained so that from the bio filter again the water will be supplied to the all culture tank copy pot culture tank so this continuous uh, i mean a uh, procedure will be followed the water will be continuously recirculated and there will be any water quality water quality problem issues by using ras and there is a adp adp mean algal dosing pump we have algal dosing pump we can set the algal density how much algae will be supplied to the copy pot okay we can set the uh, timings and the dose also so uh, automatically the algae will be supplied to the all uh, i mean what uh, copy pot culture so copy pot can grow well and uh, there is another uh, uh, sensors are there where the water quality condition temperature salinity and ph will be maintained if the temperature or salinity ph exceed the limit it will give alarm so that we can maintain the proper water quality maintain uh, management so that uh, after implementing the uh, copy pot culture in high density using the ras this is a result actually density so for example pseudo diatoma sanandali we can able to harvest this much density which include not only this density and copy pot is this much and uh, adult so like that this is paracalanus permus because if you talk about the copy pot as a life feed promising life feed 
we can uh, we can just uh, uh, think about the population density the density of the copy pot what we are getting in culture system and nutrition and other characters so after implementing the selective breeding and induced breeding we have got very good result in terms of density so that i am sure that now in coming days copy pot is going to be a uh, Uh, we are going to be a very good uh, uh, role in aquaculture especially sustainable aquaculture so this is a uh, the population density of pseudo diatom sanandali you can see here i have given some video clipping this is the uh, uh, the video of uh, microscopic video of uh, that particular uh, pseudo diatom sanandali this is the density we have got in 100 liter capacity culture tank you can see here uh, the movement pattern of the copy pot okay and uh, uh, sorry uh, due to time constraint i could not able to show you all the video i mean uh, uh, it's a video so that i can just let me skip the video and uh, yeah this is you can see here uh, actually we have a collaboration with cmo for ai and of course in the siba we uh, we cultured the copy pot pseudo diatom sanandali in 5 uh, 5 ton tank and 10 ton tank so this is the density uh, which we have got uh, in 10 ton tank tanks 10 ton tank a farm tank so this much density we can able to uh, harvest you can see here this is a uh, the copy pot density high density in the copy pot culture in the 10 ton tank i mean 10000 liter tank okay this is sura diatom sanandali and this is nitocora affinis which is an ideal feed for shrimp this is actually benthopelagic copy pot you can feed fish and also shrimp because this is benthopelagic copy pot you can see the movement pattern this is jerking movement pattern as like wow actually uh, this particular species they used to be there in the water column and also the bottom of the tank so this is an ideal feed for shrimp larvae and also adult shrimp when the shrimp become adult this is ideal feed okay and uh, another uh, important species this is i dai aitona rigida this is my dream species why i am telling this is my dream species so the species so to my knowledge so far we have developed 12 species and among the 12 species this is the potential species which can yield more density nearly 2 lakhs a uh, numbers per liter density we can achieve so that uh, this is a dream species very soon this species uh, taken to the hatchery because uh, because of high density and even nutrition point and see this is the video of this particular dai aitona rigida you can see this is a potential candidate i can uh, uh, suggest this is a potential candidate for a, a, a sustainable aquaculture you can see even density wise even the density wise and also the nutrition point of wise okay yeah this is uh, another pisbi species density yeah this is the uh, facility actually the uh, recirculation aquaculture system facility established uh, uh, in our university campus for copy pot mass production high density production uh, with the funding support of dbt dbt actually uh, i should thank the dbt because they they they, they supported me lot to develop the copy pot uh, uh, culture in our country and uh, actually i may be uh, wrong i may be wrong in telling my copy pot is superior my copy pot is a very good promising alternative but to uh, convince the farmers to convince the farmers uh, to justify the farmers really whether my copy pot is superior or really it's a good potential alternative yes to con convince the farmers to justify my result my statement we have uh, underwent for series of experiment with the different fish species sea bass latus calcarifer and pinaeus monodon pinaeus venami and ornamental fishes really whether copy pod is alternative to rotifera and artemia here i am going to present that result okay this is actually the larval rearing experiment with sea bass latus calcarifer you can see here the evidence we use rotifera artemia and copy pod and compare the result the length weight survival all growth parameters are comparatively higher in copy pot than the rotifera natimia you can see here the length of the copy pot in a sibas larvae which fed on copy pot is 44.33 mm whereas the weight is 338 mg whereas the rotifera under artemia is less than that even the survival is even you know well the copy pot in the sibas is a highly cannibalistic animal is a carnivorous animal even with highly cannibalism we are trying obtained 93 percentage of the survival with the copy pod okay and we have also analyzed the biochemical composition of fish both copy pod and fish so the copy pod fed fish always showing more protein 
more omega 3 amino mean, uh, fatty acid amino acid and lipid so here i have given all the result okay this is amino acid profile of this uh, animal fish sea bass larvae which fed on different life is rotifer artemia and copepod so copepod fed larvae always showing more amino acids especially essential amino acids and fatty acid okay and this is photographic evidence you can see this is uh, sea bass let us calcarifer larvae which fed on rotifer this is larvae which fed on artemia anopheli and this is the larvae which fed on a uh, uh, copepod so copepod fed larvae within a short period of time it will uh, uh, become developed like uh, anything with faster growth and high survival and this is another important fish monodactyle sargentus is a brackish water ornamental fish we have validated whether copepod is supporting the ornamental fish growth survival and pigmentation so survival growth and also pigmentation you can see here this is the fish which fed on artemia anopheli and this is the fish which fed on copepod nitocora affinis you can see here in the tail caudal region and the dorsal fin the pigment improvement is comparatively higher in copepod fed larvae uh, whereas in copepod I mean, uh, artemia fed fish so this clearly indicate that if you use copepod to grow your ornamental fish the pigmentation is improved which is a major character in ornamental trade is concerned okay and uh, one of my student he worked uh, uh, he did his phd on uh, uh, the copepod that is sulo diatoma sanandali and we validated with marine fish that is a uh, silver pampano silver pampano this is a uh, uh, the stockable size stocking size silver pampano you can see here actually we uh, did experiment on different feeding uh, regime copepod napli alone copepod napli plus roti for 50 50 percentage see here you can see this is the seventh day Uh, larvae attain the maximum length you can see here the photographic evidence eyes are well developed and pigments are improved when compared to i mean a rotifer combination and whereas copepod it uh, the length and weight and even pigments are improved you can see here this is copepod fed uh, silver pampano fish whereas this is a uh, rotifer and copepod combination that mean the copepods are supporting growth survival and uh, pigment improvements in marine fish also so this is a marine fish and we also validated our efficiency of our uh, i mean copepod marine copepod whether really the marine copepod is a suitable feed for shrimp yes it is very suitable there is no doubt because we worked with pinnaeus monodon larvae you can see here the length of pinnaeus monodon in copepod 35.1 mm similarly the weight is 36 mg whereas the rotifer and artemia the growth in terms of length and weight it also survive survival is lesser than copepod larvae you can see here this is the photographic evidence this is the pinnaeus monodon tiger shrimp larvae which fed on rotifer this is the pinnaeus monodon larvae which fed on artemia anopheli you can see here this is the animal which fed on or grow under the copepod feeding you can see here the antenna is developed well okay and the carapace rostrum is developed way well, and the eyes stalked eyes are developed and you can see here the pigmentation is improved several fold whereas in rotifer and artemia there is no any pigment improvement whereas in copepod you can see in the carapace and also entire body the pigments are developed like anything so it is clearly indicated that the improved pigmentation and we have also analyzed the biochemical composition of monodon shrimp larvae so the shrimp which fed on copepod always showing more protein more amino acids more highly unsaturated fatty acid this is a result evidence i have given here Ah, right. the next one is actually we also analyze the azdos and the improvement in pinnaeus monodon larvae, uh, which fed on different life feed. So this is artemia fed larvae, this is copepod larvae. You can see the copepod fed larvae showing 9.282 microgram per gram azdos and the whereas artemia fed one 3.56. So it clearly shows that the pigmentation is improved azdos and the pigment. And we have also worked with pinnaeus venami, little pinnaeus venami using copepod and different life feed. so this is actually the uh, growth uh, length weight and survival result you can see in the 21st day of experiment the copepod fed the larvae pinnaeus venami it reached 20.56 mg weight 85% survival 2.8 cm length whereas rotifer and fed, uh, artemia fed one is always lesser than copepod so you can see here this is the photographic evidence this is the initial larvae and this is the larvae pinnaeus venami which fed on a rotifer on 21st day whereas this is a pinnaeus venami fed on artemia anopheli and this is a pinnaeus venami fed on uh, copepod you can see here the antenna rostrum 
and body length even the pigment improvement in pinnaceous venami also so it is clearly indicate that copepods are improving or enhancing the growth uh, survival and pigmentation in both fish and stream so we have also analyzed the biochemical composition of venami larvae so the venami which uh, fed copepod is always showing more protein fatty acids carbohydrate essential amino acids and uh, Uh, what is that? Uh, uh, highly unsaturated fatty acids, and we have also analyzed the azadosanin content in uh, venami larvae also. Pinnaceous venami. You can see here the copepod fed venous venami showing 41.6 microgram per gram azadosanin, whereas the artemia fed one 32, rotifer fed one 27.4. So it clearly shows that. Yeah, uh, please uh, listen this video. Actually, uh, uh, one of the farmer in Thailand, one farmer in Thailand. He is growing in stream, growing his stream in a lined pond without pellet peel. He just he is started his experiment. I mean, culture as a trial basis. He cultured the stream in one pond only with natural feed. Natural feed means live feed, which include probiotic bacteria, copepod, and antipod. Whereas another set of pond is the stream will be grown in using pellet. Let me. Surprisingly, the farmer he got very good result in terms of yield. In terms of yield, when compared to traditional farming, the the bioflag co-flag farming. This is actually a novel farming technology. Bioflag co-flag. The bioflag is nothing but probiotic bacteria, and the co-flag is copepod, antipod, along with microalgae, and if possible, you can use a polyketone also. That means. Bioflag co-flag is only with the live feed, without any pellet feed, which will give very good result in Thailand. He proved practically, not laboratory-based experiment. In the field itself, he proved, and now he come out with a very good production yield by using natural feed alone. And also, he also did a separate experiment with 50 percent natural feed, 50 percent pellet feed. So when compared to normal traditional farming, pellet feed using pellet feed. The natural feed with the pellet feed, 50 percent of pellet feed, and the natural feed alone giving very good result in terms of uh, uh, yield and survival. So he got very good, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, benefit out of using this uh, bioflag co-flag farming uh, uh, aquaculture, where the copepod is used as a feed and where the probiotic bacteria is used as a water quality manager. So this is very novel technique. None of the farmers are applying in India, even in other countries. Only for one farmer in Thailand, he applied this bioflag co-flag system. He came out with very good sustainable aquaculture result. So this is actually this particular video I have downloaded from the website. This is not my own uh, video, and he also uh, said that if you grow your shrimp or fish with natural feed such as copepod along with probiotic bacteria. The animal is very active, so active and so healthy. It it won't spoil any water quality, so that the animal will grow happily without any disease. You can see how the animals are very clean and neat. There is no any uh, uh, dirt on the animal, so the animal is living excellently without uh, any problem, disease outbreak. Okay, so this is actually you can see the another video. You can see this is a. Uh, the shrimp growing in bioflag co-flag system. The animals are uh, so active or so clean, and uh, it will give very good, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, production yield to the farmers. So that after uh, 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 applying the technology bioflag co-flag by a farmer in Thailand, now even in India also the farmers are moving and they are interested to uh, do their farming with copy board. So that there are a lot of uh, farmers from Andhra Pradesh and even Tamil Nadu. They are uh, they are contacting me. Uh, even I am getting calls from uh, different farmers from Andhra Pradesh, even uh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, and they are uh, asking to provide as copy board because they now they realize that copy board is one of the potential feed. Okay, and here just uh, by another two or three slides, I let me let me uh, complete my lecture. I actually I have read one article published in Aquaculture Elsewhere Journal. the in that article one other the scientist he explained like this you can see the i have given a different point by point by point if you grow your fish 
using the feed using the feed which supply more upa highly unsaturated fatty acid along with astaxanthin okay it improves the breeding and egg quality in fish the stress resistance and immunity to diseases is improved the embryonic development and growth of fish is improved gonadal maturation of the fish is improved better feed conversion ratio is obtained if you use the feed which supply the upa i upa content and astaxanthin pigment and fertilization hormone secretion can be increased as you know well the fertilization hormone is essential to improve the reproduction in any animal so if you grow your fish or shim with uh, the feed which supply the more omega 3 fatty acid or astaxanthin pigment the fertilization hormone secretion is increased and uh, mortality rate during embryonic development can be reduced it is very important uh, uh, characteristics especially for shim is concerned so mortality is very common in the shim during the embryonic development however if you use the feed which supply the more uh, upa content and astaxanthin astaxanthin pigment the mortality rate will be decreased like anything and very important news i would like to give uh, tell to the I mean, the participants uh, we are talking about the climate change or global warming so it is the temperature in the environment is keep on increasing suppose if temperature increase continuously it is expected to be the surface water temperature is also going to be increase who knows maybe in very soon the water body the sea they become more warm they want the water the sea water they become more warm who knows is there any possibility to grow the fish or swim in warm water if the temperature is increase is there any possibility to grow the fish or swim in elevated ammonia level in extreme pollutant polluted level and is pollutant condition and is there any chance to grow the fish or swim in with harmful effect of light uv light because we are talking the ozone layer is depleting and uv radiation is increasing towards the land in that is the condition there is maybe a more uv light increase in uh, sea water or any aquatic ecosystem is there any possibility to grow or culture the fish or shim in less oxygen limited oxygen condition or even without oxygen is there any possibility is there possibility to grow the fish without water yes we can grow the fish without water without oxygen or with or, or with limited oxygen we can able to grow the fish or shrimp with harmful light such as uv and even elevated ammonia level as you know well ammonia is a toxic gas but we can grow the fish even with elevated ammonia level in water and even with the elevated water temperature everything is possible for that we have to grow our fish and shrimp with feed which supply more highly unsaturated fatty acids and astaxanthin pigment yeah the next one is in shrimp it is known that the supply of astaxanthin modifies the exfoliation frequency molting frequency if you grow your shrimp with copepod since copepods are supplying more omega 3 fatty acid and uh, pigments that uh, the uh, the molting will be very fast as you know well the molting is very important to grow the shrimp to grow since the molting is uh, increase and it uh, the metamorphosis development is shortened by copepods so the shrimp will grow faster with the minimum period of culture period and uh, another, another important although vitamin a can be regarded as a hormone it is not produced by a endocrine gland in this shrimp but it is must be obtained from the carotenoid precursor present in the copepod diet it is proved that copepod contain more carotenoids and astaxanthin pigment from where the shrimp are obtaining the vitamin a and as you know well the vitamin a plays a major role in spermatogenesis oogenesis and embryonic growth so it is very clear that the, if you use the copepod to grow your fish or shrimp larvae in hatchery or fish or shrimp in your growth system both the system the copepod can be able to increase the length i mean growth improve the survival and improve the immunity of your cultivable organism because of high immunity your animal will grow without any disease outbreak that is my take home message so here the feed is playing a major role 
so there is no doubt that poppy bod is a hygiene feed and which can supply i mean which can supply the all the essential nutrition for the sustainable farming of both fish and shrimp so my suggestion is very soon from my lab from our university we will be going to launch the commercial production and very soon we going to supply the copy ports to the farmers those who are need or those who want those who want for sustainable production of aquaculture so the recommendation uh, my recommendation is we have over 9000 square kilometer of coastline in india however the area under reclamation is less than 1 percentage likewise an estimated area of brackish water available for aquaculture in india is about 1.4 million hectares of this about 14 percentage has been brought under farming now so it clearly indicate that we have an enormous coastal area we have enormous brackish water area available in our country so the aquaculture the sustainable aquaculture practices should be extensively done extensively practiced okay for that the farmers i appeal to the farmers maybe some farmers may be attending this program this lecture i appeal all the farmers or all the researchers okay so you can use the copy ports to grow your shrimp or fish definitely i am sure that you can get lot of uh, income and it will provide lot of employment and livelihood to the uh, lot of peoples so that with this we can able to eliminate the hunger malnutrition and poverty by improving or enhancing our aquaculture production because the fish and the shrimp is the cheapest protein source so by improving the our aquaculture practices sustainable aquaculture practices using copy pot as a feed natural feed definitely we can come out with a very good yield which can uh, uh, pave a way for the elimination of hunger poverty and malnutrition in our country uh, in particular in world in general so with this uh, just i would like to uh, show you some uh, uh, clippings published in magazine about our you know our uh, achievement on copy pot culture for the first time in india we have optimized developed the technology for mass production of marine copy ports it was published in local da dailies indo and other uh, papers and actually we have also provided the culture to the some national institutes like siba central institute of brackish water aquaculture chennai cmfri mandavam even uh, nio national institute of oceanography goa and uh, rajiv gandhi center for aquaculture rgca so they are uh, we have provided this strain and we are extending our technical guidance to the national labs and even there are some farmers actually he is one farmer ornamental fish breeder uh, he, who came to our my lab and he got uh, uh, the copy pot strain stock culture from us and he has given very good feedback the ornamental fish is growing faster and with high, high pigmentation improvement with copy pot when compared to any other live feed so with this these are the some uh, copy pot launching a distribution function or farmer vice chancellor she launched the copy pot uh, distribution to the farmers and also the scientists so with this this is a right time to acknowledge the uh, peoples who began this lecture because nandri marappudu nandrandu nandalladu andre marappudu nandu in namu valluvarin vaayamoy kelpa i should thank the authorities of esteemed guru nanak college chennai uh, the uh, the uh, uh, respected Uh, chairman secretary and director of this college and the respected principal of this college and uh, respected uh, head of the department of uh, advanced zoology and biotechnology madam dr j jayendi and organizing secretary uh, dr s venu my good friend and uh, uh, dr sharmila madam for given me an opportunity to share my experience with in copy pot with you people i should thank the department of biotechnology government of india because they sanction nearly three projects because of biotechna dbt only i can able to develop the copy pot culture and now we have copy pot culture with us and uh, by another project uh, very soon they may be release the sanction order with uh, uh, a network project on life feed organism development so that is a, a big project so with this i should thank my uh, my inspirator my role model in research who inspired me lot who has given a thirst to me to enter into the research and do something to the society who is none other than dr a trunavakras the former principal scientist and fc head fish culture division of siba 
he has he has given very good guidance and he is helping a lot to develop the copy pot culture in university and i should thank uh, mr jairaj who is a technician in rank marine actually pondicherry whenever i need simple larvae for my experiment he is readily uh, given the seed without charging any paisa i mean uh, payment and uh, my students fast student and current students because without student i could not able to uh, come out with this uh, technology for copy pot that too i i should mention uh, dr s anand who is my uh, my student good student now he is working in nfdp national fishery development board who is a very good worker hard worker because of his uh, hard work only i can able to achieve this uh, copy pot culture for the first time in india so i should thank all my students dr anand and dr dinesh and all my student mr raju and all my past and current students for their help because without students i could not able to do these things last but not least i should thank my mentor my guru my research supervisor professor p perumal who is a formerly professor in marine biology annamala university and a retired professor in periyar university biotechnology department and currently working as a b ugc bsr faculty fellow in our department our own department bardas university because of him his guidance and the motivation only i can able to do something to the society so last but not least i would like to uh, convey my sincere thanks to my our university authority bardas university authority for permitting me to give this talk so with this i uh, let me uh, stop my lecture so i am very happy to uh, answer your queries if you, if you have any queries i am very happy to answer uh, the clarification or doubts so thank you once again i should thank all the authorities of uh, guru nanak college for your valuable opportunity given thank you madam so if uh, you have any you doubts sir. or clarification read out some questions to you sir so that you could answer yeah Santanam sir, yeah. can I read out some questions to you asked by the participants? Yes, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. You can please. You can please. Can read I read out, out some questions answer. asked by the participants, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir, Dr. Please, Raja Segran has asked, can we feed copy pods? Uh, Dr. Raja Segran, sir, has asked, can we feed copy pods along with probiotics in shrimp culture in bioflock technology? Yes, madam. Sure. Actually, one of my postdoctoral fellow is working on that aspect. Actually, he is uh, enriching the probiotic bacteria in copy pod. That enriched copy pod will be uh, used as a feed for the shrimp. But to my knowledge, actually, nutrition point of wise, there is no need of any additional enrichment. Okay, because the copy pod that is naturally growing copy pod itself, it has enormous amount of nutrition. For example, if any particular hormones or if any drugs. If you want to transfer to the animal, your shrimp or fish, you can use the copy pod as a carrier. Through carrier, I mean a copy pod, you can just uh, enrich uh, probiotic bacteria uh, in the copy pod. That enrich uh, copy pod can be used as a feed to the uh, our animal, so that that can be the copy. Yeah, the copy pod is used as a carrier. I mean, uh, or uh, I mean a uh, drug transfer. Like that, you can use. Yeah. Definitely, it will be a very good yes, uh, in bioflux system. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And he has asked one more question: Which media must be used for copy pot culture? Yeah, actually, uh, as I said earlier, uh, we tried with uh, microalgae and other uh, uh, alternative uh, organic uh, manures like rice bran, wheat bran, and even vegetable waste. And we can also uh, try it with uh, yeast. But to my knowledge, the microalgae is best. among the microalgae the isocrisis galbana is a best species microalgae to grow the copy pod but here the concentration is also playing another major role feed is very important similarly the feed concentration is very important so for that we have to optimize the all the characters uh, because the each and every species we have to optimize the conditions yes sir dr raj sekran who is also the net member of bharatiya university is asked will you be able to provide him some copy pod colony for his own work is directed What, for madam? the copy pod colony sir could you provide him dr raj oh, sekran sir has asked for a request whether you will be able to provide the copy pod colony for him sir oh copy pod culture he want copy pod culture yeah for yeah. what purpose he need The transfer is a faculty from Bharatiya yes. University. Which department, yes, sir, madam? Yes, sir. Uh, he is. I think he is a 
becomes a former senate me member of bharati ar university that's what he is put it in the chat box okay but actually so what we can do is uh, uh, sandanam sir if you could share if you could share your mail id sir we could uh, send the mail id to the concerned participants sure, so that sure. they can contact you in person sir sure but i will i will share my email id to the participants so that yes. they you uh, just for the participants yes. for the this is for the benefit of the participants we will be sharing the mail id for of dr santanam for uh, any further queries you can always mail to us we will share uh, dr santanam's mail id with you thank you sir there is one question from satya rv can we use kopi pod as a feed for milk fish yes any fish you can use any fish milk fish not only milk fish even grouper the, for grouper is the best feed is kopi pod because the size the kopi pod it has a uh, uh, smaller size the mouth size of the grouper is very small and not only milk fish even you can use for any fish both ornamental fish edible fish even coral you can i don't know corals are eating a kopi pod kopi pod is the best feed for corals you can rear any marine organism uh, the kopi pod is the best feed to my knowledge yes sir there is one uh, mr adiosum from nigeria he is asked are yeah. these fresh water species of kopi pod yes we have fresh water species also we have uh, apocyclops okay uh, cyclops species we have even a diatomus species we have mesocyclops the fresh water species also is there but the diversity is concerned the marine ecosystem having more uh, species diversity than fresh water and uh, likewise the nutrition point wise marine kopi pods contain more nutrition than the fresh water kopi pod of, of course we have fresh water kopi pod also in our lab also we are maintaining some species of fresh water that can be used to rear the fresh water fish or fresh water prawn yes sir uh, mr rakesh kumar janamani has asked how do you suggest to to do kopi pods in bioflock system no bioflock system actually you can just directly inoculate the kopi pod bioflock system is nothing but a system where the probiotic bacteria is maintained to maintain the water quality in the same system you can directly inoculate the kopi pods let them allow to grow let, let them allow to multiply in in, the, in terms of biomass so here yeah, the bioflock system the probiotic bacteria is a water quality manager whereas the kopi pod is a feed to the animal cultivable animal so we will we are getting uh, both benefit benefit from probiotic bacteria which is which is maintaining water quality and here the feed is kopi pod which will improve the growth and survival of the animal cultivable animal you can inoculate directly into the system by a flock system there won't be any issue so one last question from mr rameshwar yeah. bosle he has asked how to benefit using bioflock technology for tilapia no boy for any fish actually we the bioflock technology is very good only when compared to traditional uh, aquaculture bioflock is a, is actually is giving very good uh, uh, benefit to the any fish even not only tilapia not only any marine fish or freshwater fish the bioflock system is very good for all type of fishes uh, whether it is freshwater or brackish water marine uh, marine species because uh, uh, due to uh, water quality problem Uh, i can suggest bioflock is good method for the sustainable aquaculture yes sir i think you have answered most of the question asked by participants as i told earlier it is not possible to ask all the questions because we have thousands of participants who are watching the uh, live session thank you very much uh, santanam sir the, for the wonderful session that you, you have done for us it was really informative it just go through the uh, chat box you would definitely see that uh, complaints are pouring in for your session people are very very happy and the most uh, important thing that they have told is they are very happy this is a validity address that you are giving and uh, it has been very very informative for all the participants sir thank you once again let me formally now propose a vote of thanks and thank you uh, uh, santanam sir for the one informative session thank you madam first and foremost i should thank yes, you sir. for uh, your invitation i should thank for your invitation and uh, yes. opportunity thank you madam yes sir first and foremost we thank dr sadana uh, associate professor 
Marine Plant Analogy and Aquaculture Lab, Department of Marine Sciences, Bharatidasan University, for having accepted our invitation to be a resource person for today's valedictory session of this seven days workshop in aquaculture and fisheries development and sustainability. He has delivered a wonderful session on the role of Kopi ports in building a sustainable aquaculture. We thank you, sir, for all valuable time thank and you. expertise. Thank you. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the PG and the Research Department of Advanced Zoology and Biotechnology, Guru Nanak College, I place my heartfelt thanks to our respected General Secretary and Correspondent, Sadhavanjit Singh Nayarji, for his immense support. Our ever motivating principal, Dr. M. but for his words of fear, this day would not have been possible. Thanks to our charismatic Vice Principal, Dr. L.R.S. Kalanidhi, for the warm words of welcome participation in options and the support rendered to us. A special thanks to the Dean Academics, Dr. Savitri, Dean Sciences, Dr. Noor Jahan, Deans of various schools, heads of departments, and all my colleagues. I thank all our resource person, Dr. Shahul Amit, Dr. Altaf, Dr. Shanmugarasi, Dr. Devora Vimala, Dr. Jay Kumar, Dr. Kaisam, and Dr. Santanam for sharing the expertise to make this workshop a grand success. I place on record my sincere thanks to Dr. Gayatri and Dr. Mahendra Kumar for their technical help. My sincere thanks to Dr. Bhuneshwari, Dr. Shiva Kumar and Mr. Sandil Vairavan and all my colleagues and students and research scholars for the tremendous support. My congratulations to the organizing secretary of this workshop, Dr. Venu and Dr. Sharmila for their untiring efforts for all these days to make this event a grand success. I would fail my duty if I don't thank my dear participants from all over the world for the tremendous support and sincere participation. But for the participants, we will, this event will not have become such a mega hit. Thank you all for the support. We will, we will assure you that we will be conducting many such programs to match your expectations and to support the cause of research and a sustainable future. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you again. We will meet again another day, another time, another topic, but with the same cause to learn, relearn, and research. Thank you one and all. Good day and good evening. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, madam. Thanks for the opportunity given. Thank you one, once again. Thank you, Adas. Oh, no, no. Announcement to the participants. Please fill the feedback link that is posted in the chat box. You will receive your certificates within a week's time. Please mail your inquiries to zoologyshift1.hod at gurunanakcollege.edu.in. We are coming up with an international webinar on nanotechnology and soon we will be conducting another workshop on bioflock technology. Interested participants can always join us. We are expecting the same support and uh, uh, enthusiasm that you have showed throughout this entire seven days of the workshop. Thank you once again. Good evening to all of you. Thank you. Thank you once again, Santanam, sir, for the wonderful session you gave us.